I'm Scott Al Miller, and I'm a full-time expat living abroad in Latin America, with a lot of Americans especially, but people from all over the world now looking to travel and explore the world more than ever, whether simply as tourists and looking to, you know, check out a new, more interesting vacation spot, or perhaps looking to do some investigation because you're interested in becoming an expat, maybe part-time or full-time. There's a lot of people who are venturing out for the first time, and they may be looking for a bit of information that they are not used to having to look for. And in doing so, you may be turning to your State Department website for information as to travel advisories, safety concerns, guides for what paperwork and other details may be needed, and so forth. And most countries maintain a website like this, so people have a lot of questions. Are these sites really useful? Are they full of correct, up-to-date information, and is it something you should be using? Well, that is a wonderful question. It's something that a lot of people wonder about, and until you are a seasoned full-time traveler, you may not have very much insight into exactly how these sites work. So let's talk about that on today's show right after the bump. Nearly everyone, when they first start traveling any extensive amount internationally, is likely to turn to their State Department websites. It's a natural reaction, and people do this all the time. So when you become a heavy traveler, especially one who is going to more exotic locations and maybe needing to find out a little bit more information, we have a lot of discussions about this, and it becomes uh, something that we joke about quite a bit, because the world over there is something that is very universal, and that is that the information on State Department websites, they're not always called that. That is a really common term in English, but certain, certainly in the United States, Canada, UK, and so forth, it is technically called the State Department. Other places will have similar names. Universally, the world over, the information on these websites is useless. It exists almost always. There will be exceptions, most definitely, but not in the United States by any stretch, the purpose of these websites are actually to promote the needs of that country's government. They are rarely, if ever, there for the good of the citizens of people who are traveling. It is not the job of your government under normal circumstances to provide a travel information website. That's not something they're normally mandated to do. That is actually a slightly odd use of your tax revenue dollars, but instead these sites exist to steer you to places that make sense for the government, not necessarily for you. Commonly, if you look at the United States State Department website, it was it is always full of information that will encourage you to go to quite dangerous places that are super expensive, as long as those places are currently at the moment uh, aligned with the interests of the U.S. government, not of you individually, and they will take places that are are incredibly safe, low cost, perfect places for you to go, but may not be currently acting in the direct interest of the U.S. government or are places where the government is concerned about you learning about things that they would rather you didn't learn about. And so they will call those places dangerous and list all kinds of things about them. It is such a predictable system that there's really no need to go to the website. You can easily predict based off of uh, propaganda and news items that are in the general cycle in the national news as to how they're going to portray a given country. And you can normally look at items that are going on in the United States. And this is really telling. You can tell mostly how they're going to tell what's going on, right? So the first thing is you can look and say, okay, the U United States is not friendly with X country at this particular time. So we know they're going to say negative things about them. But what negative things will they say if there's not actually a real negative to worry about? Well, you can go look at the U.S. news cycle and see what things are of concern to American citizens going on in their own country. So if the U.S. was currently undergoing, we'll say, a, a large number of forest fires and people were really concerned about air quality and safety from fires, suddenly you will see countries that the United States doesn't want to encourage you to travel to. They'll suddenly claim that they're having lots of forest fires and air quality issues. So those, those issues touch close to home. If you watch the news cycle in the United States, whatever things are getting the public really riled up and concerned about policies at home, those will be the things you almost certainly will suddenly see popping up in the State Department accusations of other countries with, if you really follow the news, generally absolutely nothing behind them. And the only correlation you can find is what's going on in the United States. So it's that predictable. And we've you know, as travelers, this is something that we see for decades in a pattern that's completely, completely normal. Now, the idea 
of going to a State Department website. It sounds great, right? Like they, in theory, they've got resources, they have people on the ground, and they're going to do a lot of research and gather. Like it, it seems logical. So you can easily imagine why we would think that the State Department might have this information, first, uh, first of all, and then want to provide it to keep the citizens safe or whatever. Second of all, there's a logical, why, why wouldn't they want to do this? But there's more to this story. The first thing, is that in many of the countries, now if you're talking about some place like Canada, the United States has a really good idea of what's going on in Canada. But if you go to a lot of other countries here where I live, for example, the State Department does not have resources out traveling around the country. They actually don't know what it's like around the country. They do have resources here. They have an embassy. The embassy is far away. The staff from the embassy does not normally travel around the country. You do not find them out and about. They're not out interacting with people far afield. They may travel to one or two enclaves from time to time, but they're not out in the normal population. They're not out uh, really digging into the country. Much like if you think about something like a Lonely Planet guide and you say, oh, they must know so much about the country. And then when you actually get a Lonely Planet guide, you realize, wait a minute, there would have to be an expensive resource who knows how to write, knows how to review restaurants, knows how to do out going to all these hotels and staying in all these towns. That would take an enormous amount of time. They'd never be able to leave the country. They'd have to go from town to to town every day to keep this stuff up to date. And of course, they're not. It's just fake. Someone may have come decades ago. They got some basic information really quickly driving through town. They wrote down some names they saw. They took a couple quick pictures and they moved on. They didn't actually review the places. They didn't actually try out very many places. And famously here, uh, we actually know when the uh, Lonely Planet author was here many, many years ago. And everyone joked even then that they didn't go enough places to really know the place at all of all all the people who are available here, everybody knows the market better than the Lonely Planet writer who made the book. The book is literally worthless. It has no insight whatsoever. A casual person passing through the country doing a YouTube channel over a period of a week will have just as much information as the person writing the Lonely Planet Guide. The same basic thing is going on with the State Department. They don't go out and visit the country. They don't go out and go to lots of different cities and communities and talk to people and interview and, and you have deep insight and, and information gatherers. They don't have that. They're sitting, it's just a, a small team sitting in an office far away doing paperwork. And yes, they have a role to play and they do important things, but investigating the country and providing travel information is not one of their mandates. And it is so far outside of their resource pool that if you actually saw the embassy in action, it would be apparent that there's no way they could really be providing be providing those kinds of meaningful resources. They simply don't know. They're not a knowledgeable party in this situation. So to be providing it conceptually doesn't make a whole lot of sense. There's a second layer there. Uh, the idea that you can travel, uh, provide travel advisories at a national level is super silly. Let's put this into the most unbelievable basic example that we can come up with for Americans. Imagine that someone's coming from Oh, pick a place, Australia, South Africa, Germany. They're coming to the United States. They've heard about this little place we call Disney World. They think it sounds really fun. The food sounds nice. It, we've heard it's safe. The pictures look nice. There's these rides that seem really cool. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. Why don't we go to the United States? Well, what if they were to check the advisories from their own government? So there's a really good chance that their advisories in those governments are going to talk about basic things that Every country list is problems with the United States. There's areas of extreme violence. For example, St. Louis and its suburbs do pretty badly on violence. There's the problems of arbitrary arrest. There is a uh, lack of rule of law. There are uh, curtailing of women's rights and travel uh, problems. There are all kinds of issues are listed the world over about traveling in the United States. And they can point to real, actual news items that uh, back up those concerns. And so you'd say, wow. Yeah, those are real concerns. Yes, maybe, but they're not concerns in Disney World. They might be concerns in St. Louis or something like that. There's, a, It's a country. It's way too large to summarize as a single list of here things you are concerned about. There are some things that you do need to potentially know when traveling into the U.S., but most of them have to do with any particular dangers complications or requirements that you may face when crossing the border. Oh, did you know you have to have this type of visa for that type of travel? 
oh, that's good information. I do need that. And anyone coming into the U.S. would need that information. Great. But there is a high degree of danger on the south side of St. Louis. It's only useful for someone who would be traveling to St. Louis. And quite frankly, 99.9999% of travelers to the United States had never crossed their mind to maybe go to the south side of St. Louis at all. So having an advisory about there, even though it would be accurate in that sense, is completely meaningless because that's not how a tourist is going to treat that, that country. The United States is too big. It's a country to put into simply a list. Could something bad happen in the United States? Obviously. But is it very likely as a tourist, especially one going to Disney World, to experience problems like that to the point where it's useful to warn them? No, it would be completely dishonest and misleading to warn someone in that way about the United States. It just doesn't make any sense. And that's if you were to truly have true advisories, which in many cases you do not, but if you were to have a true, true advisory about another country, the State Department's information would be in the same context. It would be, well, as an entire country, this thing could happen and therefore you need to be careful. But you're not going to do these weird things, right? So we talk about Guatemala quite often, because Guatemala is a country that has a heightened danger level uh, in general. And, it, you know, when, when we talk about its violent crime rates and its homicide rates, those things are real. They do have higher homicide and uh, violent crime rates than, say, Nicaragua or the United States, which are very similar uh, in their crime rates. So you, Nicaragua being just slightly safer than the United States, but the U.S. being, in reality, quite a safe country. When you are looking at Guatemala and you get those statistics, you say, wow, I need to be really careful. But the reality is you don't have to be really careful when going to Guatemala. Is it possible to find more danger in Guatemala than in Nicaragua? Yes, that is absolutely true if you are seeking trouble. If you are seeking trouble, Nicaragua will make it relatively hard to find that trouble because there's so little trouble to be found. But in Guatemala, if you went out of your way to actively seek it, you're much more likely to encounter it. But if you are not seeking trouble in Guatemala, it's going to remain an incredibly safe country, even though pockets of crime do exist. Are you going to wander into the jungle? Or are you going to go find a cartel base? No, of course you're not. You're going to go to the main city and go to restaurants. You're going to go to a show. You might go to Lago de Atitlan and take a boat ride and go check out the cool little communities and uh, go do, uh, you know, a traditional music ceremony. You might go to Shela and check out a secondary city. Maybe you'll go drive through the mountains or take a, a country walk or visit a volcano. None of those things have high crime pockets around them. So while it would be honest for a, a department, a State Department website to warn that there is uh, violent crime in, in Guatemala, it would be completely misleading if you tried to apply that to a normal tourist encountering experience. So it's at a conceptual level, the idea that you warn about the uh, dangers within a country often just isn't there. It just doesn't make sense as a thing to do. You can go to pretty much any country and find nearly all types of crime, corruption, and other problems, and you can go to nearly every country and find areas, especially for tourists, that are incredibly safe. There are exceptions, right? It would be useful if the State Department was warning about things like war zones that are currently active. Well, that's super useful, but warning against very, very safe countries and saying that one person was rumored 20 years ago to have had something bad and we weren't able to completely disprove it, so we're going to say that these things could happen, doesn't make a lot of sense. And even in the United States, where a lot of bad things do happen, statistically they don't happen that much. They just happen a lot because it's a really large country. So any one out of a million type thing, something that happens one out of a million times, still happens nearly 350 times a year in the United States because that's how many people there are. So it's uh, important to understand that these things are meaningless on, on a grand scale, but they, they are also impossible to be accurate on the ground, and it is not the mandate of those departments to be accurate. And more importantly, since the Obama administration, there's a new law in place in the United States. Now, before that time, the State Department website was still useless. So this is not a new thing. This is not because of this law. But as of the Obama administration, there is a new law that says the United States, uh, it's the propaganda law, the United States does not have a mandate. It has no requirement whatsoever to tell the truth to its own citizens. So you can't even go back to the State Department and say, this is dishonest, this is incorrect. They can simply say, and? 
it's no one said it should be. That's not its job. It's not the department's job to produce correct information. It is not their website's job to give you correct information. So when you're looking, this is an important skill for travelers. And with many people becoming travelers, new for the first time, especially going abroad and looking at places that they may never have looked at before, it's really important to know that the State Department website is there for the purpose of misinformation. Because it cannot be trusted, it never will serve the purpose of giving real warnings. But importantly, it gives absolutely incorrect information. So the thing that I would encourage you to do is never look at the site at all because you can never trust it. But it's not just that you can't trust it because you can't prove it's accurate. It is because it is famous for being utterly inaccurate in the most heinous ways. It is so absolutely bunk that there is no purpose to ever opening the website. They are not your friends. They are not there for your purposes. They are not there to keep you safe. They will put you in danger if it is seen as beneficial to the United States government. So you want to be careful because they are. it is literally like going to a con artist and saying, hey, I need some information. I know you're a con artist, but I think I'll start with you lying to me and try to figure out where the lie is. That is not a safe process. That is how you get yourself into trouble because the more you encourage people to lie to you, the more likely you are to believe the lie, even though you knew it was a lie when it started. The more you hear it, the less likely you are to maintain the fact that you know it's a lie. You'll start to question your knowledge of a lie and you'll start to believe it. And a great example, one of my uh, fans who was here for quite some time and knew the area really well. Well, Rick, he was from Canada, so this is the Canadian uh, State Department, not the American State Department, so great example that's outside the U.S., uh, came here. He'd been here previously, been here previously with his wife. They had traveled extensively in the area. They know how safe it was. They know all the different areas, like really, really comfortable being here. Um, and the Canadian government put out a false advisory about Honduras, and it caused his wife, who wasn't with him, to have a panic attack and refuse to allow him to travel to El Salvador, a country safer than Canada, and all based on the misinformation that the small bit of Honduras lying between Nicaragua and El Salvador wasn't safe enough. It is a completely safe zone. There's no crime there whatsoever. It is a tiny sliver of Honduras in a tourist zone with two incredibly safe countries on either side. Does Honduras have some crime issues? Yes, it does. Are they there in that region? No, it is not. It is a ridiculous thing to apply some very, very, very far off remote danger to this one particular stretch of highway. Yet that is what they did. And they, the Canadian government was able to manipulate in such a way that it caused a lot of Canadians to be unwilling to either travel from Nicaragua to El Salvador or vice versa, causing a drop in tourism in both of those countries, plus impacting Honduras as well. It is really simple to manipulate the system once people start to believe it a little bit. And so this is a powerful tool that state departments will use against you because getting your money and your time and effort and your mind share steered where the government wants it is very beneficial to them. So savvy travelers, it's an important thing to know as you start to go out and explore the world, avoid state department websites in, in from anywhere in the world. You just can't trust them. Some governments do try to do a good job and put out good information. And once in a while that is useful, but if it, there is accurate information there, you'll be able to find it somewhere else. If there's inaccurate information, you're going to have to go through this effort to disprove it. And uh, when, if you ever have someone quote to you, oh, I don't think you should go there. Look what the State Department says. They should know that what they're quoting isn't real. Right? That, that should be something that people know. That's not a verified source. That is not accurate information. There's no reason to be quoting that. That's not an honest place to go and get warnings from. And that's one of the reasons why I do shows like I do. I'm willing to put in the effort to show what it's actually like on the ground because a casual observer, and I've had so many people on my channel say this, from casually watching my show, they look around and go, wait a minute, in the background, we can see that this is not the country that's being described by the State Department website. And yes, it is that dramatic that the things they're saying can be disproven in minutes on the ground. Come and visit the country, walk around, and in a day, in two days, you'll be like, wow, now go look at the State Department website and say, now that I know what it is, beyond a shadow of a doubt, holy cow, it is so blatantly implausible. They depend on people 
never questioning it. They depend on no one believing you when you say it's so wildly inaccurate that, and that that really does work. So many people never travel. So many people are so afraid of going out and exploring the world that it is a powerful tool to the point where even though everyone who travels knows that it's, that it's completely misleading, that it's absolutely inaccurate, there's just so many people who never travel that they'll believe whatever they're told that it becomes a powerful tool. So I want to thank a number of people. I've had at least four people ask me about this in the last 24 hours. Uh, so thank you for that. It is a good topic. It is an important one to have. And I want to have this video for people to link to uh, as they're beginning to look more and more at going abroad. It's the perfect timing for this. So thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. Get down there and ask your questions. I really appreciate everyone who takes the time to ask everything and get in the conversation and, and let me know what crazy... Uh, uh, inaccurate things you've found on the State Department websites of your country for sure. Um, if you'd like to help support the channel, we've got a link that we put on the screen, but it's down in the show notes as well. Just go to buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller, and you can buy me one or a couple of coffees. It makes a big difference. And we do have a join button for people who want to become monthly members on the show. We do have a private discussion group for those people. It's not really worth the money. The whole thing is just supporting the show. We really appreciate it. We don't sell anything here on the show. Someday we're going to sell t-shirts and, and these cool hats, but we're not selling them yet. Uh, we've been lazy about that. That is, that is really on me. I apologize. But uh, we're not here trying to sell services. We want to get the truth out about what the world is like and make you guys feel comfortable going out and exploring the world and help you avoid where places truly are dangerous. They, they exist. And we don't want you to stumble into them any more than uh, anyone else does. We want to make sure that you are safe, but we don't want you avoiding all the wonderful safe places in the world because someone is trying to steer you where they can empty your wallets most easily. So thanks for joining me. I'll see you all tomorrow.